Hi. Good morning or good afternoon to everybody. Good well, to Facebook good is live again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. I wonder what, what must have happened to all those live sessions yesterday when the whole thing went Ooh. crashing down, huh? That is a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> let me let me ask you while while everybody's just connecting, Lorenzo. I mean, you as the CEO of Creative Zone, you must have heard so many company pitches and you yourself also have to deliver every now and then a pitch what what is it for you that makes great pitch look that's that's a very good uh, topic for me I'm, i'm very passionate about this 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 topic this this issue that we're raising today um, before we formally get started i could i could maybe just make a small thing that says uh, in life no matter at what stage you are in your life who you are whether you're an employee a startup an entrepreneur a big business owner you're always pitching you're always pitching whether it's convincing your wife in the morning to to make you breakfast or to to help you with with a coffee or or, or your kids convince them to go to school you're always pitching so i think uh, today's conversation is going to be a good one i i have a few anecdotes to show when we get started i'll be happy to share a little bit on what has been my experience on 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 this issue on this topic of pitching Oh, I can I really can't wait to to hear more from you. I mean, <laughs> that's the beauty of it, right? You get to speak to so many people, so therefore there's a lot that people can take away from your experience as well. Yeah, yeah, indeed. I can see about 30 people connected so far. We had a, a, about 150 people RSVP to the event. Um uh, they're telling me 200 uh, now they're correcting. Uh maybe to the ones that are connected already, tell us where are you connecting from? We still have a minute or two until we let everybody come in. I see Charlie, the global connector from South Africa. Charlie, it's good to see you. Tell us where are you connecting from? I see some familiar faces. Amina, Diarmed, Ilman, Mario, Martino. It's good to see some, some Latin names over there. Welcome to the <laughs> Latinos. Uh, Charlie, I think we've had you before and we've done quite a, quite a bit with South Africa with our good friend Vusi Tembequayo. Uh, nice mustache, Lorenzo. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting ready for Movember. It takes me a while to to, to grow facial hair, so I, I need a month or two to, to to get to where I need to be by by November. Uh, I already have an advantage here. I should yeah. actually join this year. You know what? I haven't dared. I haven't been changing my beard style for <laughs> 10 plus years, so maybe it is time to join Movember. <laughs> I think, yeah, we're trying to do this thing through the office. I think I'm encouraging all our male staff to wear one of these by, by November. Let's see if we can manage that. All right, all right. By the I way, like it's, that. it's Pink October, it's uh, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We did a little post today and uh, it's nice to see that people still connect to the topic and, and you know, the issue of creating awareness about the importance of women uh, having themselves checked. And uh, it's, I think it's such a good initiative that puts this in your in your mindset and says you know this is something that i should be at least taking care of and doing absolutely right absolutely right it's it's great initiatives and then of course now to see all of that with expo coming together this month it's such a great time have you been already yeah i i, I got a a special invite to go before the opening and uh, it was beautiful i think for anybody that has the opportunity to go and have a look it's such mm. a good setting Uh, I mean, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful day experience. You will, you will not regret it. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. I'm doing a bit of work with the German pavilion. We are moderating there and we also found the moderators. We looked for people that want to become moderators that are passionate communicators and gave them that opportunity there. And I have to say, amazing content, amazing content. So much inspiration yeah. there. It's wonderful. Yeah. All right, it's 306. I think we can officially get started. And for those that are still to connect, we will welcome them. We're opening the chat uh, across all channels. So once again, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this Creative Zone webinar. Today is all about mastering the art of pitching. And we have the amazing Flo Akimbiyo. Akimbiyi. Flo is, is actually a, a good friend of the Creative Zone family. He's He's been a, a client of Creative Zone for, for a few years now, and he's a communications coach and a communications expert. He's been in Dubai for, for over a decade now. He has a really interesting background. He's half German, half Nigerian, and he's been really going up the ranks in the UAE when it comes to appearing in some of the, the top events, being a moderator, 
being a speaker, being a presenter. I've seen him present some really world-class events over the last few months here in the UAE. Flo, I can see that your career is taking uh, things to a new level. So congratulations on the work that you're doing. And honestly, we can't wait to hear a little bit on your tips for all the people attending today. I think they're going to learn quite a bit when it comes to pitching. And well, as we were saying before, pitching or mastering your communication skills and, and, and pitching and negotiation skills, we were saying is something that you need no matter who you are. Uh, whether you are a, in, you know, a business owner, an entrepreneur, an employee, we're always selling something, right? Mm, absolutely. I mean, you have to, right? And what, what I always love about it, if you think about pitching, you always have that opportunity to decide whether you go just delivering something average or whether you're going to deliver something outstanding. And that every moment you have that opportunity. And that's, that's exactly what I'll be sharing today. But before I share, I already uh, asked uh, you earlier, could you share, before we get started, one or two anecdotes of your experience, whether it's as a CEO of Creative Zone or it is observing some of the startups delivering investor pitches? I'm sure that you hear so many pitches. So what's your take on it? Thank you for that question, uh, Flo. And look, um, in, your, in my previous life, uh, before entering and going back into the corporate world, I, I used to own a media company that specialized in, in sort of selling communications campaigns on behalf of countries. So we will rock up to a country like in the case where we have Charlie here in South Africa. We went to South Africa. We did a lot of work over Africa and the Middle East. And we will go to these countries and we will meet with government officials. And we will tell them that we were there to produce this communications campaign about uh, promoting these countries for investment destinations, for tourism, for tourism around the world. So basically we were constantly pitching. We were pitching our projects to them and we really needed to, to perfect the approach of this. And it was a really super orchestrated way of how we were presenting. We were a team of three. There was an orchestra on the way that we would start, how the second person will come in, what I will say, what the other person will say. It was usually a team where there was a man and a female and we knew at what point the female would be the one raising certain things that had to do with maybe asking about the sponsorship and the money and the things, you know, how the, the other person would react. It, it was really perfectly executed. So I really had to learn the best way of, of, of presenting this. And I really uh, came to understand that there were certain elements that your pitch had to have in order to be successful. So hopefully in today's session, you will tell us what are those things that uh, that pitch needs to have and needs to, what is the message that it needs to convey? But a couple of the takeaways that I would say when we were doing that, there were a, key, a few th key things that we were using. So for example, we would start and we would meet a big minister of economy or foreign affairs, and we will always try to be very friendly about the approach. And we will use things like, well, your excellency, uh, first of all, before we get started, uh, I would like to say that we're extremely excited to be in South Africa at this point in time. The country is going through some incredible changes, the transformation that the country has gone through. So it's about giving. At that time, at the beginning, it's about giving. It's about mm. you telling them how excited you are to be there, how honored you are about the possibility of sitting in front of this individual and, 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 and being able to share so when, when, when I felt that whenever you, you convey that thankfulness, that appreciation, the, the human has this way of wanting to pay this back. And if you play this game correctly, diplomatically, and it's your time to ask, and you've done your due diligence, and you've done your research, and you expressed yourself with passion, then when it's your time to ask, is their time to re reciprocate and, 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 and give back in a similar fashion that you presented. Usually you get back the way that you present. If you presented negatively, problematic, you're gonna get back a similar approach. If you present it in a very amicable, in a, usually you will get back in a similar fashion. So uh, this is what, what I learned through the years when it came to pitching governments around the world, but there's a lot of details that this speech um, and and the, the truth is that being, uh, being organized and systematic is very important. You need to prepare each word, each sentence, 
has a meaning. It has to be expressed in a certain way. So the issue of preparing yourself is, is key. So this is my little two cents for today. Um, I thought of sharing that uh, little uh, session with you. You couldn't have, I couldn't have asked for a better opening. You literally talked about all the key topics that I wanted to, that I will be speaking about. So wonderful. I 100% agree to every single word that you said. So perfect start, perfect start. Thank you very much right, for that, no, Lorenzo. No, no, you're welcome. So I think in today's structure, Flo has a presentation to give. I'm going to leave the floor to Flo. He'll be presenting to you guys. We have about 60 people connected, plus the people on Facebook live. Flo, the floor is yours. Please let us know how we can all improve our art of pitching. And uh, I'll be stepping away and I'll come hopefully a little bit towards the end of the session for some Q and A's and for closing today. Amazing. Thank you very much again, Lorenzo. Thank you, Flo. Thank you. I'll see you later. So let me share my screen and then you should be able to right now, okay. Now you should be able, give me one second so I can just note, wonderful. So now we're talking about the art of mastering pitching. Now, before we get started, Lorenzo actually spoke about something that is so important. He said, something that really, really made a key point here. He talked about the audience. He said, you need to know your audience and you need to have to, you need to address them in the right way. And I can't agree more to this. You have to know your audience because at the end of the day, you want to avoid that you have an audience that looks really bored, like in the picture that I'm showing you. What you need is an audience and you need to know that the audience is more important than the speaker. And when it comes to pitching, now this is unfortunately what happens very, very often. That people actually take their content more important than actually the audience. And I'll wrap up with talking about the audience as well today, but I want you to start off with understanding the mindset of the audience. I am absolutely a big fan of this image. I've been showing this image way before content, way before COVID ever happened. It, for me, it represents really the amount of communication that happens all around us because it is a crazy amount of communication. There's email, there's WhatsApp messages, there's Facebook, there's Instagram, there's LinkedIn, and, 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 and. And then you also have your, your private communication and so on and so forth. So there's so much distraction already happening. And then COVID is still real. So therefore there's a pandemic that lays another layer of uncertainty and distraction over your audience. So if you just deliver an average pitch, what you always should be aware of that your audience has a remote control in their hand. Yes, absolutely right. They have a cell phone. And when you deliver an average pitch or a below average pitch, well, what's the thing that is going to happen? The audience is say, sorry, I had to step out. Maybe I missed some parts, but the reality is they're not sorry. They are not sorry. So therefore, when I talk now about communication and about the art of marketing your pitch, I will talk about two aspects. I'll talk about content hacks, and then we look at delivery hacks. Two aspects that we talk about. But before we get started, I've got some great news. At the end, everybody who stays with us until the very end, I've got a gift worth over than a thousand dirhams. But at the end, after these 60 minutes, you will only be able to get that gift. So make sure you don't miss out for this one. So as I said, we'll start off with some content hacks. And the first one that you need to understand is, of course, that you need to respect the format. Before you even think about your content, you need to first think about the audience, and then you need to think about the format because every format is a little bit different. Whether it's an elevator pitch, where you have only very little time and need to get your message very short and sharp across, or it is an investor pitch. And your investors, they're maybe not that much into storytelling. They don't want to hear too many details and facts. They want to hear hard facts and numbers. That's what I've been hearing a lot from startups that I'm working with. Or you have maybe a networking event where you need to give either a good business introduction or an introduction of yourself. Again, something that you should be planning and you should be working. And of course, the same goes for your business pitch. And all of these formats are formats that we can prepare. 
Now let's start off with your introduction. Unfortunately, I hear too often, whether I moderate events or whether I meet people or whether I do work as a communication coach and I get people to do a few exercises and ask them to introduce themselves, I always hear the same old introduction. Hi, my name is, I work as blah, 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 blah. And my role is here at that. Same three old introduction. I mean, it's so boring. And when people start their presentation like this, start their pitch like this, well then, ugh, you already lost them. So therefore you want to do something better. And I'll show you now a little strategy that I created, CIA. No, we're not talking about the Central Intelligence Agency of the USA. We're talking about three points that can help you deliver an amazing introduction. So what do you want to do? First, you want to do, you want to create a bit of a connection. Second, you want to leave them with a bit of inspiration. And then third, you want to display your authority. Now you can mix them up and play around with them. But instead of just saying like, hi, I'm Floyd Kimbe, I'm a communication coach and I am here to talk to you about pitching. I could say, well, do you know that feeling when you finish a presentation and you know you could have done better? Do you know that feeling when you would like to establish a connection with the audience, but you just don't know how? Or do you know that feeling when you know you could be more expressive, you could be more passionate, you could be more authentic, but there's something holding you back? Well, over the years, I had that opportunity to work with more than a thousand professionals, leaders, teams from all over the world. And I have found out that if you help individuals and teams to work on your content, to have the right tools in place, and also, and that's a really important thing, to work on your personality, to work on your authenticity. I have found out that everybody can be a great communicator. And one of the secrets is that you need to find out what are your communication superpowers. My name is Fleur Kimby, and I'm a communication and presentation coach. I can deliver a presentation, an opening, a business pitch, an introduction like that with CIA, where I talk about a connection, I try to inspire them, but at the same time, I have a few facts in there that display my authority. So that's a really good hack, how you can craft within a short amount of time, a, a opening, a presentation, something that is memorable. Now I'll show you a few communication structures and you need to keep in mind that today, we'll only scratch on the surface, but all the tools that I show you is what you should be screenshotting, what you should be writing down because they are powerful tools that can make you deliver a winning pitch. And the first communication structure that I always love to speak about is of course the three act story structure. I'm sure you guys have heard of the three act story structure. If you have, please do tell me. If you haven't, then also let me know. You can talk to me in the chat over here. Yes, no, have you heard about the three act story structure? Another analogy would be the burger, the burger approach. Well, I hope everybody had their lunch because otherwise you might get a little bit hungry. Well, the burger approach is very simple. You have an opening, a body and a conclusion. This is nothing new. This is not rocket science. Unfortunately, the reality is that many people just don't really look at that structure. They start off with, hi, my name is, as I said before, and then they go into a body and it's all just boring from there on. So therefore, they never really get to deliver a winning pitch or presentation. So what do you want to do, of course, is when you deliver an opening is you want to have a bit of a hook. And Lorenzo already said it so nicely. He, for him, the hook is really to connect with somebody on the other side, and that's what he can do. Or of course, one of the best strategies that will always be out there is to deliver a little bit of storytelling. I love showing this little survey that I did on LinkedIn. And if you look at it, it shows you that one of the best ways to connect with an audience is to be a great storyteller. If you are a great storyteller, well then your audience is connected with you. So therefore doing a little bit of storytelling for an opening, that's a great way. But that's just one example. There's a hundred million things that you can do in your opening. Sky's the limit, right? At the end of the day, you need to be creative. You need to create something that adds value to, the con to your audience, but also that hooks them, that captures their attention. So they actually 
put the phone down and go, okay, let me listen to that gentleman because he has something valuable to share. And that brings me to the body. Now, a good burger looks like this, and I bet you all agree. But the reality is when it comes to pitches, when it comes to presentations, when it comes to investor pitches as well, people like to deliver this. A burger that is just looking really, really nice from the outside, but when you actually try to grab it, it already just goes like, it just slides away. You can't even eat it. And why is that? Because there's just too much content stacked on top of each other. And instead of focusing actually on the big picture, people get lost in details. Now, this is really interesting. Many leaders and also many specialists, they want to make sure that they are perceived as specialists. So therefore, they don't focus on the big picture. They go right into a level of detail. And what's the problem with that? Well, if you think about the audience, you need to understand whether the audience is interested in detail and also if they are able to understand that level of detail. So therefore, instead of diving so deep in, it's much better to first explain that it is, well, either it's a truck or it's a sports car or maybe it's a convertible and let them understand what that car, what that truck, what that race car can do really well, why it is special. Give them a few facts, a few highlights, but don't just explain every single detail. And if somebody has questions, we can always get to that later. And that is just a really, really amazing approach that many always forget that it's more about understanding the big picture first, and then we can dive into details. And if you do that well, I can guarantee you, you separate yourself from the crowd. And think about this structure really when you are delivering your pitch. And I show you another communication structure. And this one is one that you can use for your body. And it is one that is absolutely powerful. And it is one that I learned from no one else than Simon Lancaster. Now, Simon Lancaster is a script writer and one of the world's best script writers. He has worked for people like Tony Robbins, not Tony Robbins, well, actually Tony Blair. He's been working for other politicians. He's been working for CEOs of multinational companies. And what he did in one of his speeches, he also looked at the entire structures and rhetorical devices that politicians would use. And one of the things that he shared in that script writing course that we did with him a few years ago was this, this amazing communication structure. My story, our story, what's next? My story, our story, what's next? Now, my question to you is, what is so special about this structure? As I am just right now trying to find the chat, I'd love to hear from you in the chat. What is so special about this structure? Why do you think this structure really, really makes a big difference in the way how people communicate? Any ideas? Please do tell me what is so special about this structure. I'd love to hear from you. I'll open up the chat so I can see a few of your responses. Um, the chat doesn't work right now, no problem. But tell me, what do you think makes this communication structure so special? My story, our story, what's next? I'll tell you. First, my story. I'll open myself up. I'll become vulnerable. I make sure that I'll share something with you. So that's a great way. Storytelling, I have to share. I'm opening myself up. Then you come to our story, and that's the magic part. That's where you really deepen the connection between your audience and yourself as a presenter, as somebody who's pitching. And with you showing that you're one of the tribe, that you all belong to the same family, you now have a much better approach to then actually tell them what's next. When you present your pitch, your business, your product, your service, then you can actually have their attention because they want to listen to you. It's an absolutely incredible pitching structure. It's wonderful for presentations. It's great for speeches. And if you play around with it, you'll see that it works like miracles. And that's really something wonderful that you can use for the body. And that brings me to the conclusion. Now I'm sure many of you have heard this closing because this is when presenters treat the closing more like a finish line and they don't treat, treat it actually as one of the most important parts of the communication. That's it. Now, Lorenzo, I have to apologize. I'm going to be using a bad word, but it is worth it. 
I give you a good reason why you shouldn't be closing with that's it. Because if you add a little SH to it, guess what you get? That's, I'm not saying it, but why is that so powerful? Because if you say that's it, or if you say that's bad word, you are not leaving the audience with something memorable. Instead, you're just wrapping up. But instead of actually bringing home the plane and landing it, you are just finishing off on a really weak note. And at the end of the speech, if you announce it, you can have, again, people's attention, right? If you say, well, let me wrap up with this. Everybody goes like, okay, he's saying his final words. Let me just get ready for what happens afterwards. So you can have the undivided attention again of the audience. So therefore, you should make use of that. And I love showing this little speech of Sheikh Mohammed, well, just the closing words, because it's such a powerful way of wrapping up a speech. And that's really something that you can take on for thinking about your closing of your pitches. Have a listen to this. I want uh, to stay here long, but uh, what I want to say is many leaders promise we deliver. Thank you. Many leaders promise we deliver. Isn't that a fantastic statement? Isn't that a fantastic closing? Many leaders promise we deliver, full stop. Now that's a wonderful closing. And that's a powerful statement, something memorable, something that you can take away. And it's just, again, same for the opening, same for the closing. You can use your own creativity. You don't have to use a memorable statement. It could also be a call to action. It could be a little summary. It could be something that is memorable and that works well for your audience. But as Sheikh Mohammed delivered this powerful statement, you should be thinking about what is that powerful closing that you are delivering. And if you're working on that, you are again, one step ahead of the pack. And that brings me to another point. And this is something where unfortunately today in the next 30 minutes, we don't have time to really deep dive into the subject, but I'll show you actually a little bit around storytelling. I touched already on one of my favorite storytelling structures, my story, our story, what's next. And now I'll show you one that will make you a number one storyteller. Without a doubt, if you haven't heard about the hero's journey, then you need to do some research around it. The hero's journey is really work that is so important, that is so relevant, that almost every movie that you watch follows this structure. And it all goes back to the works of the literature professor Joseph Campbell. He did a lot of research and back in the day, and he looked at all the stories and myths that you can find around the world. And in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, he has actually decoded a 17-step monomyth, which is a quite complicated structure of how you can tell stories. And he has actually told, if you look at this one, you'll understand that the hero's story is really what you should be telling. And if you look at the greatest brands, whether it's IBM or Apple or many other companies, how they tell their success stories, how they tell their case studies, it's always following the hero journey, hero's journey. So I've got a wonderful tool for you that I'm sharing with you right now. This is my brand, mystorybrand.com, mystorybrand.com. If you go onto this platform, there's a really great description of how you can tell the hero's journey. And you can tell it actually for brands, you can tell it for case studies, you can use this framework in many different ways. They even have tutorials where they explain how you should be talking through the story structure. But basically, it's very simple, right? You've got a character that has a problem. And then the character meets a guide. The guide then gives them a plan. And that plan is then really turned into reality. It's that call to action. He helps them to make sure that plan is now executed. And then 
it ends in success. And of course, he helps him to avoid failure. And in between, you've got that character transformation. And this framework works for your entire life. This is really how the world tells stories. And it's really important to think of that if you tell this for case studies, for success stories, for your work, when you want to pitch your services, it's not that I need to put myself, so I'm not saying Flo Akinbi, no. Flo Akinbi is just the mentor. I'm the mentor, I'm the guide here. But actually your client, that is the character. So really I'll invite you, go onto this platform, download, well, you don't have to download, you can actually do it online, but work with this script, work with this template to create amazing stories that will make your audience go wow. That will make your audience go wow. And wow is what you can do either through storytelling or by using the wow factor. Now, I'd love to hear, is there anybody in marketing from you guys? If you are, please let me know in the chat. If you are from marketing, if you know what the wow factor is, just let me know. Are you a marketer or do you know what the wow factor means? I'll wait to hear back from you. I'll give it a moment. Do you know what the wow factor is? What is the wow factor? What does that mean? And how does it, how could that be relevant for your pitches? Well, I show you. The wow factor is that moment when you use something in your communication that literally makes the audience go, it blows their brains out. It's that moment that is just unforgettable. It is stunning. That is a wow factor. And you have wow factors in both sections, whether it is in the content section or whether it is in the delivery section. And I'll show you them actually in both, but we'll start with the content. You can craft content that has a wow factor. And almost every company has a wow factor to it. But what you need to do is you need to look at numbers and you need to actually translate them into wow factors. So let me show you a few great examples. Now, this is the uh, Wassel Plaza at Expo, a very recent example. Way before, I think it was around 2017, when Expo introduced the Al Wassel Plaza as the beating heart of Expo 2020, what they did is they didn't just say it's made out of this much uh, tons of steel, which is a really, really big number. And they didn't just say, this is the height, which is 67 meters. And they didn't say it's just 130 meters wide. Instead, it, what Expo did is they created these great comparisons. So they compared the width to two A380s. Now, I don't know how long an A380 is, but I know one thing that if two airplanes if two of the largest passenger planes fit inside the Alwasa Plaza, it must be gigantic. That's what I can tell. And actually it's 73 meters. That's the length of one A380. So two of them, incredible, isn't it? Or if you think about that comparison that it is higher than the leaning tower of Pisa, which is 57 meters. Now, again, I don't even need to know what the height of the Leaning Tower of Pisa is. If an entire building that is world famous fits inside of a structure, I know it must be absolutely incredible. And the width, uh, sorry, the weight, they compared the weight to 500 African elephants. Now, these are great comparisons. And the media, they picked up on these comparisons. And it's a great way to do storytelling, to give people something memorable rather than just saying, well, it was around 6,500 something tons. That's not memorable, but 500 elephants, that's a great comparison. And I'll show you a few more. I worked with one client, MTM Global Connect. Now MTM Global Connect, they are the African Eti Salat and they also have that business unit that actually installs fiber cables around Africa. And in the last years, they installed 100,000 kilometers of fiber. Now that's an impressive number, isn't it? 100,000 kilometers. However, I do not exactly know what that means, what that translates into. I know it's a lot, but what does that mean? Now, one of the most obvious comparisons would be looking at how often could we go around the world, which is around two and a half times. That's cool because once around the world, that's 40,075 kilometers. However, 
going around the world, around the equator, that is something that is also very abstract. So the one that I like actually a lot more of that comparison is to say, now with 100,000 kilometers of fiber, you can build a bridge from Cape Town down here in Africa, all the way to New York in the USA. And you have a bridge now that has not just one cable, not just two cables, not three, not four, but six strings six strings of fibers and that is the distance and the distance from new york to cape town is actually 12,557 kilometers now that's a great comparison because it really makes you think and you can almost visualize the map in your head instead of just hearing 100,000 fibers where you're trying to work out where in africa would we somehow go no instead i give the audience a very clear image something that is memorable and I'll give you one more example. This is another client of mine. I worked with getting it. So they are a Swedish medical, medical, medical equipment manufacturing company. There you go. And what they did is last year in 2020, they tripled their production of ventilators. What do you need to treat patients that have severe COVID reactions. So therefore, from 10,000, they went to 30,000 ventilators. I mean, that's incredible, right, for a company to triple your production. However, if I look at it from the other side, I think, okay, there's 30,000 ventilators, but we're talking about billions of people on this planet of Earth. So therefore, are we really saving the world here? That number doesn't look as impressive from that side. What, what you could do is you could do a little bit of math and translate that number actually in something that is incredible. So let's do the math. We've got 30,000 ventilators. Every ventilator is used on average for two weeks. That gives us 26 times that every ventilator could be used in a year. So 30,000 times 26, that gives you 780,000 lives that Get in it has potentially saved by tripling their production. And that is equivalent to a city the size of Frankfurt in Germany or Seattle in the USA. That's incredible, isn't it? With tripling their production, they have potentially saved an entire city. Wow. That's really a wonderful comparison. That is a lot stronger than just saying, well, we've tripled our production and we're really proud of it. You can actually give a comparison and create something memorable. Memorable. And the beautiful thing is, again, it's not complicated and sky is the limit. You can be as creative as you want. And being creative brings me to my last point that I have prepared for you when it comes to the content. And then we look at delivery. And I tell you, I included this point because I am just so tired. I mean, as you can imagine, as a moderator, I get to see a lot of presentations on stage and a lot of presentations on stage when I host the conference are actually sponsor presentations, which are always, I'm pitching either my business or I'm pitching my services or I'm pitching a product to you. And guess what? Most of these PowerPoint presentations are just horrendous horrendous. They are not presentations that actually add value to the audience. They're not presentations that actually add value to the speaker. Right, the opposite. Too often, I hear a speaker actually pointing out, well, this slide is actually a little bit complicated, but what I want to say here, and I'm like, why would you even show a slide that you have to explain that it's complicated and the audience doesn't even get it? Apparently, you don't even get it, so why would you show something like this? Now, I'll show you a philosophy that you can really embrace, that it's easy to learn. Well, unfortunately, I can turn you into PowerPoint superstars in the next 20 minutes. But what I can do is I can share with you a philosophy. And it starts all with understanding that in my world, there's three different presentations. And number one is the book, or you could call it a report. I'm sure all of you guys have seen these kind of presentations. They look maybe like this. That's a lot of content on one slide. Now, the sad thing is that I took this out of a webinar. This is a real screenshot from a webinar. Same goes for this one, from a webinar, or this one, from a webinar. And these slides were on the screen for 
maximum 30 seconds. Now, why would you show a slide like this where I need already three minutes just to read it and then another five minutes to understand it? Why would you show that? That doesn't add value. That makes sense if you send it over to somebody to read, right? But it does make sense for any presentation and it does make sense if you want to pitch anything. So that is not what you should be doing. But the reality is it happens all the time on stage, virtually everywhere in meeting rooms, doesn't work. So instead think of, okay, we've got a book, a report, something to send. Then we've got a face-to-face -face presentation and the face-to-face -face presentation, well, let's say it's a little bit more forgiving because right now I can't see you. I don't know what you guys are doing, but face-to-face, -face, I can look at you. If you look confused, if you're reading something, I can react to that. That's of course a different scenario. So face-to-face -face presentations, you can have a little bit more content on there. It is okay because I can react, I can observe you and therefore we can talk about it. And then you've got virtual presentations and now you should actually believe that everybody would have mastered it. But as you could see, people have not mastered it. And what do you want to do with virtual presentations? Well, I'd love to say, think more about presentainment. And that's a hashtag that I love using because as we go with edutainment, right? If you want to learn something, add a little bit of entertainment to it and it becomes better and it's easier to digest. Same goes for presentations. Just do your presentation and add a little bit of entertainment value to it. So therefore, what do you need to do is create spectacular slides, full stop, spectacular slides. And I love definitely this quote from Lee Jackson. He said, your slides should be rather a billboard and not a document. And a company that has done a terrific job is Spotify. I took these screenshots again from another webinar and look at that, that's one number on there. It's a powerful visual, it is just stunning. If you look at this name slide, just wonderful. But spectacular slides can also be something like this. Now, I'm showing you the slide in the reverse order because Steve Plimsoll, what he did actually, he showed it the other way around. He showed it first when he explained bytes and then all the way going to the maximum. He started with one byte and then he just showed another point and he showed another point. And I'm just jumping a little bit ahead until we got to the zettabyte era. And because he animated it and he showed one point after the other and he's got, had these really wonderful comparisons, it all made sense. It was a spectacular slide because it helped me to visualize. And that's what spectacular slides can be as well. And I'll show you another example of Steve. He also used this slide as a comparison and an explanation of actually how 3M really disrupted the process of hanging a picture. And he showed one thing at a time. First, he showed the drill, then he showed the hole, then he showed the picture that we actually wanted to hang, and then he showed the product. And then at the end, he brought it all together and showed all four together. That's also a spectacular slide. It is definitely not the most beautiful slide, but it works really well and I can follow it. And another guideline here is of course, to think about your audience. Think about your audience when you create PowerPoint slides. So you need to know your audience. Instead of just putting something together, think about your audience. And I can only tell you from my side, I constantly work in revising my content and revising my slides. So I always think about what would add most value to my audience right now? Because at the end of the day, it's not just about me and what I want to deliver. It's about me giving value to you. That's really what I'm here for. And that's what I'm trying to do. And that brings me to the second part, delivery. How are you guys doing? Do we have energy for more? Tell me quickly, yes, no. If you have a little bit more energy, we've got 15 more minutes, 14 more minutes. And I have a few high level facts for delivery. So tell me quickly, yes, do we have more energy? Yeah, okay, perfect. And then we're going to wrap up. So we have got three to five minutes left for questions. Now, delivery. Delivery is really, really important because at the end of the day, well, you need to present your business. And sometimes when you think about a networking event, you maybe have to present yourself. So therefore, what you should be doing is to deliver with a high level of authenticity. And it isn't easy because at the end of the day, you need to accept 
that you are the best version of yourself. You need to accept that you can copy someone else's style. You need to accept that it might take actually quite a while to find out what is the best style that you can have, that you can develop for yourself. And that's a journey that it takes. And also it might be a little bit uncomfortable because it means that you have to find out that you are actually a colorful flamingo and you're not just as everyone else around you. But once you tap into that energy, it's amazing what can happen for you. And I've seen it really with all walks of life and all professions, whether it's a lawyer, whether it's a CEO, whether it's somebody in, corporate, in a corporate managerial position, people tend to do, put themselves into a box. And apologies for the bad word, but I love that effing word in there because why do we make ourselves small? I have noticed it very often with myself and I've also noticed it even with CEOs, when they present to the board, they tend to make themselves small. So instead, what you need to really do is you need to push yourself when it comes to an authentic delivery. And you need to get out of that comfort zone, try out different things, take some calculated risks to make sure that you can actually deliver to the best of your abilities. And the key, the secret here is actually that you need to understand what are your communication superpowers. When you have understood your communication superpowers, you're just accelerating at a rapid pace. And I'll give you one of the most simplest examples from my life. This, my Afro, well, that's a communication superpower. Some of you might be like, Flo, why is that a communication superpower? Well, let me tell you, when I work as a moderator, some clients would book me because of my Afro. Other clients would get me because my Afro, my fashion style, it works for what they want to actually present. So therefore, this is a communication superpower that I have. I don't even have to say a single word, but it works in my advantage. And that's really what it is. It can also be maybe the way how you tell stories. It can maybe be the way how you actually are able to translate complicated subjects into simple comparisons. It can be so many things, but once you understand your superpowers, magic happens. And that's really something that will make you more memorable to have an authentic delivery. But you shouldn't just have an authentic delivery. You should also deliver with passion. And Lorenzo said it, right? You want to deliver with passion. Now, I know passion is a complicated subject because often passion is not thought as energy. But for me, when it comes to communication, I see passion very often as energy because if you think that passion is energy, then you actually can alter it. You can also think about a more sophisticated comparison. Sir Isaac Newton, who said, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So if you put in that much, that much comes out. But if you go higher and put in more, then more can come out of it. And that's what you want to do. And I show you, I show you one quick video. This is Petra Nonet. She is actually an actress and she has done an amazing transformation for herself. She worked before in an agency as a project manager and then she decided at the age, I think of 35 to become an actress. And this is how she prepares for a casting for an international blockbuster. Let me show it to you and then I'll tell you why I show it to you. Why would I show this little clip to you? Well, if you think about our lives, especially here in Dubai, where we live in a very fast paced city, do we prepare sometimes for pitches like this, getting ourselves into a higher state of mind? Uh, maybe, but the reality is most likely not. Most likely we're just running off from one meeting to another one, instead of actually preparing, getting ourselves excited to deliver something that really makes an impression on the audience. So I'll invite you to think of passion more like a dial. You can deliver at a lower state of energy or you can be more animated. Do more, do more smiles, do more body language, do more passion, play around with your voice, do all of these things. And they will really, really help you to deliver at a better level. And when it comes to the voice, right? I'll, I'll show you this one little tip. If you think about the voice, I always like to say that your voice is a Ferrari and it is 
one of the most powerful communication tools. And without giving you any technical explanations of what you should do with your voice, well, it's very simple. Instead of just sitting in front of an audience and speaking there with a very flat, monotone voice, mix it up. Speak a little bit louder, speak a little bit softer, speak a little bit more quiet, faster. Play around with your voice, understand your voice. And that's how your communication becomes better. That's how you can deliver a winning pitch. Or think about your body language. <laughs> Apologies, there's one bad word in there, but this is really funny. Well, instead of looking like this, when you start off your presentation, which I have found that term online, instead of showing that resting face, well, start with a smile. And all of these little details, they really, really are game changers. And that brings me to the wow factor. The wow factor for delivery, and I show you only one example, is something that is really, really great, but it is so powerful. So I worked with somebody from, who worked in the, AC, in, in the AC business, in the AC industry. And he would start his pitches sometimes with showing the audience a glass of dirty water. So he would show the audience a glass of dirty water and then say, will you drink this glass of dirty water? And obviously the audience would go, no, I wouldn't. And then he's like, well, if you don't drink that dirty water, why would you accept to breathe dirty air? And immediately you go like, well, uh, it's all disgusting around me. Incredible. So that's a part of your delivery where he used a prop, where he used actually something to enhance his delivery. And many people can do that. And that brings me to my last point. So we have a little bit of time left for questions. What you want to do is to establish a connection with the audience. And Lorenzo really, really got that well across. And why do you want to do that? You want to humanize your communication and you want to make sure that you do business, not just B2B and not just B2C and also not just P2P, not just between your colleagues and your peers, but business between two humans. Because at the end of the day, every single pitch that you deliver is from one human to another. And if you understand your audience, if you understand the format, if you prepare great content and make sure your delivery is spot on, then you're delivering winning communication. Now, before I wrap up, I'll take a quick break so we can ask some questions and I'll stop sharing to do that. And then I'll tell you in the end also what kind of a gift I prepared for you. Ah, Lorenzo's back. Hi, Lorenzo. Hi, hi, Flo. How are you? That was great. Very well. That was great. I can see there's a lot of engagement and people are asking questions and comments. A lot of really good tips you're putting there for people. Maybe as we are making a bit of this, this chat, I can start advising. If you have any questions, start putting them on here or on the Q&A uh, section. And uh, myself and, and Flo, we're going to be reading those and Flo is going to be addressing those questions. But so put, the, put your questions out there, put them here on the, on the, on the chat function or in the Q&A section. And Flo, I really like so many of these points. I like that part that says, you know, uh, you're communicating human to human. You're not communicating, you know, B2B or B2C. You're communicating human to human. Mm. You're doing business human to human. Absolutely, right? It, and, and that's what people always forget, right? They think that, oh, if, if, if I just uh, focus on my content, that's all it is. But it is not, right? And at the end of the day, that human connection is really what, what makes it or breaks it. And I, I'm, I'm still stunned that after more than one and a half years of virtual communication, so many corporates, they are used to still have virtual meetings for hours with cameras switched off. I mean, <laughs> you can imagine that engagement and that human connection that you're not creating here right now, right? Wouldn't you agree? Exactly, exactly. You're absolutely right. In today's world of digital uh, and, and Zoom meetings and Teams meetings, how do you convey that message and, and remain you know, powerful, uh, it's, it's, it's a real challenge, right? Mm, totally, totally. It, it really is. We already have a few, few questions here. Shall we, shall we start with them? Yeah, yeah. Usman is saying, how to go about non-verbal communications in today's world where meetings are virtual and in most cases without cameras on? This, this is what we were addressing right now. 
Yeah, so number one, switch on your camera. I mean, as if I don't drive and if I've got a solid Wi-Fi connection, I will always switch on my camera. And unless I, I really, really have to do something, which I try to always avoid, I want to be present. I want to connect with people. So I switch on my camera. And if everybody else has their camera switched off, I don't care. This is me. You're talking with flow. I'm a human. I want to connect with people. And then also what I showed, right? The resting B face. Well, it's, it's such an easy hack. But if you think about any TV presenter, what do they do before they get onto the camera? They go three, two, they start off with that big smile and then they start off that communication and immediately it changes the dynamics, right? It's these little th simple things that really make an impact for communication. You, Lorenzo, are, are really great at that as well, I have to say. Thank you, thank you. There's some good questions coming through. Um, there's a question from Facebook. It says, I see myself as the brains of my business, but I very much prefer sending my partner to do the pitches. Still, I get the feedback that I should be the face of my brand. How do you reconcile with this? I don't feel confident about my public speaking. Well, sorry, there's only one thing I can say. Book a session with me and then we can work on that. No, but uh, jokes aside, actually what you should be doing is push yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. If you don't like public speaking, then work on it. At the end of the day, if, you, if people tell you already that you should become the face of your brand, and listen to them. And Warren Buffett said that if there's one skill that can raise your value by 50%, it's becoming good at communication, becoming good at public speaking. So therefore, there you have it. Push yourself, go out. And if you need help, you don't have to work with me. You can work with any professional that can help you to overcome you, whatever's holding you back. But don't hold back because that's, that's amazing. If people want to see you, you should do that. I've, even, I've, I've read that even some of the most successful people in the world are not great at communication skills and communicating Ooh. their own things. Many of the very sort of successful people are introverts and have even a difficult uh, time when it comes to communicating. You have, for example, Elon Musk. I mean, when you see this guy talking, he's a bit all over the place and he's a bit quirky and weird and he doesn't <laughs> really connect the sentences properly. I mean, and I think people buy this. So for the person that wrote this, this comment, I would say, don't, don't be afraid because you don't need to be this excellent, people don't buy that. People, I, I really come to see that people that have really incredible communication skills, for the people that are on the other side, they have a bit of a, they're a bit judgmental and they're like, mm, I don't know if I fully trust this guy. But when someone is a bit more human, shows their flaws, show, I think people are, tend to want to say, you know what, I want to engage with this guy because somehow it becomes a bit more, less threatening, if I could say, Flo, what, what's your take on that? I fully agree. I mean, um, as I said, right today, I was just scratching on the surface of my material, but one of the people that I love to speak about when it comes to authenticity is Gary Vee. I mean, <laughs> Gary Vee, he's the king of authenticity. The other day I saw him do an Instagram live from his bed. I mean, this is not what I think I should be doing ever, but it works, right? He's got millions of followers and that's what people love seeing from him. And so therefore, yes, absolutely right. You don't have to be perfect. That's the beauty of it is today people love an authentic delivery. And just to look at the other extreme quickly, if you think about Barack Obama, which is one of my favorite speakers in the world, do you know how much effort he puts into communication, how many years of practice he has, and also with how many, when he delivers a big speech or when he delivered as a president a big speech, how many how many rounds of script writing, how many rounds of rehearsal he would go through. It's a massive effort. So therefore, if you want to be good at communication, there's only one way. Do it, do it, do it, do it over and over again until you get comfortable with it and until you also get better. That's Another what I'd question, say. How can we introduce ourselves in the pitch? How much should you go into explaining about who you are? This is a good question. How much should you introduce yourselves on the, in the pitch? Well, I'd say number one, again, know your audience first, right? Because if you know your audience and you know that you've got one of these investors, for example, it's an investment pitch and you've got one of them that are just pop, 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 then you should be really, really short and to the case. If you are at a conference and you know that you've got a 25 minute speaking slot and you know that the audience is generally also interested in connecting, then you can maybe spend two, three minutes on storytelling. So I don't think there's a, there's a cookie cutter approach, one size fits all. But what I'd say is think really about 
sharing something that adds value to the audience. That's always the best way of thinking about a, a connection. And what, what I also would like to add here is if you think about a networking event where everybody introduces themselves in the same format, try to do something different, try to be memorable. That's definitely what I would recommend. Excellent tips, excellent tips. I mean, I saying I look very young for my age and people don't always take me seriously. It's not really noticeable on Zoom meetings, but in office meetups, it is. First impression matters. Do you have any tips on that? Well, let me put it that way. I'm 40. I don't look 40. If I cut my beard off, I look like 25. And it doesn't matter. I think especially today, if you look into the startup scene, if you look into technology, you find people at 25, at 23, and they are amazing at what they do. I think it's more having the confidence, being well-prepared, and making sure that you deliver something that, that makes sense, that's a lot more important. And, and if somebody doesn't take you serious, you should prepare so well. You should give them content that just blows their minds where they go like, oh, wow, I will never question her again, regardless of her age. John says, when using props, is the plant behind you intentional? Increases your Afro. I mean, you, you look a little bit like Jesus Christ right now, the Redeemer. Uh, is this... Is this, is this orchestrated, the, the plan behind you? Well, uh, well, yes, the plan behind me, uh, I put the plan in a little bit because otherwise I just get a white wall and a gray wall. So I'm trying to get the <laughs> best out of it. Um, you know what? At the end of the day, putting a little bit of extra effort, that's definitely what I would say. And using props, 100%, right? Like, for example, uh, when, I, when I talk about something that is related to my phone, I just show my phone to, to add a little something to the communication. Or when I talk about my Afro, I just like to point out my Afro. And if you have a few tools, they can be a really nice addition to your communication. They can just make it a little bit more engaging. And also if you think about, especially for virtual communication, where you're just watching a screen, where you've got just this talking head, the audience is thankful if you can mix things up a little bit. So therefore it's an easy tool that you can introduce. And that, that example of the dirty glass of water, I think that just shows that a prop can work really, really well. Mm. I have two little anecdotes that I can share before we close for today that come Please. to my mind related to these topics. Uh, one of them is about using props. And the first one is a little bit to do with what I learned through this, this journey of pitching and presenting and stuff. When I was through this journey of presenting to governments and stuff, I met one girl that actually ended up being my business partner. So when I saw that she was so good at this, I said, I need to partner with this lady in order to continue doing this business. And we ended up partnering and we've, we've done that job together for about 12 years or so. Um, and what I was shocked to, to learn is how she was doing it versus how I was do it, doing it. And I, and I, I remember clearly <laughs> there, was, there was this one thing. I remember we were both actually competing with one another and we were trying to both get a meeting with the Minister of Finance in Tanzania. And I remember I managed to get the meeting first and I had prepared myself all these printouts that I put in this hardboard thing that was showing Tanzania in a new age of development. And this was to be presented, to be published in the New York Times uh, uh, newspaper. And I printed this heavy six page thing and I wanted to show them how I envis envisioned this, this special report. And I remember going there and there was a team of six people at the ministry. And I did this massive presentation and I showed all of this and I walked out and I thought, man, I did so good. And, and in the end, I left the meeting and they told me, okay, we will let you know whether we will do this or not. Now, next day, my business partner, my competition went in and she had the same meeting. And I remember, seeing her going to the meeting and I'm like, you didn't prepare any material. What are you gonna show them? She says, no, I'm just gonna go out there and talk to them. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and only when I started working with her, I realized what she would do. She would walk up to these meetings and she would barely speak. This woman had the power of making all the other people speak and says, well, I'm here with the New York Times and she will shut up. And then the other person would start saying, oh, but yeah, the New York Times is the best and the most incredible newspaper in the world. It wasn't her saying the New York Times is the best newspaper in the world. She will say, yeah, mm. and I'm here to try to communicate about Tanzania. 
And then the minister will say, yeah, it's very good because then it's an opportunity for us. So what she was doing, she was making people say the things that she would have said in her own speech. But it's so much more powerful when the other person is saying those things instead of you saying those things. And she will walk out out of these meetings with all these contracts signed because it was the other guy saying what they wanted to do, not, not me. So there was the difference. I was trying to convince people. She would get people to say exactly what she wanted them to say. It was incredible. I had never seen someone being able to manage people uh, in, in this way. So I learned so much. And the second anecdote that relates to Leila, whenever she would do these meetings and stuff, um, we would be in a meeting and whenever she felt that the guy was about to say, no, I really don't wanna uh, be part of this initiative. She would take a potato out of her back and she would put it on top of the table. And the people would be like, what the heck is this? And then she would go like, well, I don't know what else to do here to try to, try to convince you to be part of my initiative. So I'm taking, and then this will really relax the whole thing. You will become friends with people. So again, what you were talking about, you know, this issue of doing things different, having these props, having this thing, this is really little techniques that make you connect with people. So anyhow, sorry about that. I thought I'd, I'd share a little uh, on those two stories. I don't know if there is anything that you can comment on that to, to close that. Yeah, you, you know what? Yeah, thanks, thanks a lot for solidifying my point. And, and second, I, I'd like to share also a little story which, which exactly reflects on that. So there's one of the agencies that I work with as an experiential market here. They, they had a creative director and the creative director would always have the team prepare the presentations. And sometimes he would go to that client meeting and he would literally discover the proposal as he's presenting and he's like, oh, here we're gonna do this and that. But he was amazing at selling and you know why? Because he had so much knowledge of everything that would happen, all the luxurious trends and everything around that entire industry. And at the same time, he would always focus on creating an amazing connection with the audience. And that's how he won all the pitches. Not so much actually with the actual proposal that the team prepared, poor team for, for months sometimes, but always him actually connecting with the people and understanding the topics that the clients want to talk about. And it, it exactly is as you said it, absolutely right. Yes, absolutely I right. That. I love that idea of showing up and doing a presentation and say, look, I have no clue about the slides. Let's, <laughs> let's discover, discover them together. And, and you show how you know, you're surprised every time something comes up. Absolutely. I mean, people don't want to hear the perfect pitch, the perfect presentation. Yeah. This is what I used to do. And I met a girl that would show up naturally and she was doing 10 <laughs> times a better job than me. So, yeah. That, that is wonderful. That is wonderful. Flo, how can, are we, are we how out can of people, time? How can people reach out to you? Do you have a landing page, something, a form that people can, can fill in and, and connect with you and... Um, and hear more about your, yes. uh, your services? Absolutely. So as I promised in the beginning, I have a gift. So everybody who connects with me right now on LinkedIn, they will, and they need to send me just pitch in that connection message. So I know that everybody is a participant from this webinar. Out of everybody that connects will get, one person will get a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, which is definitely worth a little bit of money. And at the same time, if you connect with me on LinkedIn, you hear about what are my next steps and we've got amazing stuff in the pipeline. So we are right now launching a new program for B2C clients before my sessions were always more one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, but now I'm doing also group sessions very soon for B2C clients. So anybody who wants to be part of them, they can do that. We're launching an online course in the next couple of weeks. That's also amazing stuff. And you hear all of that on LinkedIn. We're posting every day on LinkedIn. So therefore connect with me. And you also have the chance then to win a prize. Excellent stuff. So everybody scan that code, connect with the flow on LinkedIn. You can reach out to him and he'll tell you more about how he can help you improve your communication skills and master your pitch. I think absolutely that right. Absolutely. Excellent. Right. Flo, we can't thank you enough well, for today. It was, it was great. I see a lot of good comments. This has been such a valuable session great content thank you guys inspirational tips thank you flo and lorenzo thank you thank you pirlanta oh pirlanta i know you pirlanta tuba you're a good friend i mentioned you were doing <laughs> some filming a while back 
Uh, ah, I know Perlanta Tuba as well. Hi. Yeah. Interesting. Very yeah, good. she's saying. Hi, guys. She's writing. Anyhow, guys, <laughs> uh, we had about 70, 80 people connected throughout the session. Flo, it's been great. It's a pleasure to do this with you. I think we should do this at least once a month and teach our audience about pitching, communications. Of course. Anything that we can do from our side at Creative Zone, guys, we're here to help. We support entrepreneurs and startups in their journey to, to success. And it's not only about setting up their business and getting a trade license, but as you can see, we try to help in every stage of the way um, and every step of the way on, on anything possible. Flo, thank you so much for today. With pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.